questions from my followers on Instagram. How often do you eat in a day and do you eat junk food? We eat three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, in between, uh, especially when, when uh, we're kind of bored, we do, shouldn't admit this, but we do eat a bit of junk food, but we've got to keep it all, all within, the, within our limits. Do you have a degree in something? Sports science, I did a sports science degree. It was a distance learning, so I did it all from home. It took me uh, four and a half years because I wasn't at the university, but it's something that uh, I'm very proud of. Welcome back to the channel. This is I, Rudy Samuel. Today I'm chilling with South Africa's Vice Captain and Super Sport United's Captain, ladies and gentlemen, Dean Furman. Thank you so much for coming onto the channel. Really Today we're going to focus on your journey towards um, turning pro and the AFCON that's about to start and just your life. So, do you mind telling us how you became a professional footballer? Yeah, I started, I was born in, uh, I was born in Cape Town. Um, my family decided to up and leave at the age of five to the UK um, and it was I just played normal football with my friends as, as most young boys do um, I was playing for my, my local club and at the age of nine I was scouted for Chelsea mm -hmm. um, scout well, was they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, were, they, were, they were often scouts at our games and, and this time around I obviously had a good game and, mm -hmm. and the, the scout offered me and my best friend who's still my best friend to this day um, the opportunity to go on a trial six week trial and at the end of the trial I was offered a, a contract and unfortunately he wasn't which is which is amazing as, as nine-year-old best yeah. friends how do they choose yeah, and, and yeah, he's yeah. a good player as well um, but it's nice that we're still best friends to this day mm -hmm. and, and anyway from there carried on through the age groups mm -hmm. um, up until 16 and at 16 uh, that's when we finished school in the UK so obviously then you, you either continue with your with your um, with your school Study studies or, or you get offered kind of full-time mm -hmm. to be an apprentice at, at at your whatever club you're at and, and Chelsea offered me that scholarship and I always remember the day sitting with my dad in the car we'd just been offered the, the two-year uh, scholarship with Chelsea um, and we're saying right is, is this is this the, the direction we're going to yeah, try yeah, and go yeah. with our life and mm -hmm. thankfully for me I, I had amazing support from my parents yeah. and, I, and I see that on social media too yeah yeah, yeah I'm very close to them we're, we're a very close family yeah, yeah. Um, and we, uh, my parents said, go for it, give it everything. Yeah, uh, they've yeah. always backed me and, and the, the miles they drove around London to, yeah. to take me to, to football matches was, was something that I, I can never repay them for. And, and sitting there with my dad, he said, listen, this, if this is your dream, go for it. Um, so from there, that's when you go full time. Mm -hmm. Still carried on a bit of studies um, on the side, but really I was, I was a young full time footballer, yeah, 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 yeah. kind of living my dream. And I was living uh, most of our dreams, yeah, and, <laughs> and rubbing shoulders alongside. I mean, it was the time when Abramovich came in, yeah. So I was now, about to ask, sorry about that. How did it feel growing up and seeing Frank Lampard eating lunch at the same table as you, basically? Yeah, John well, Terry, well, Drogba, you know. Frank Lampard is my hero, and to this day, he's still my hero. I, I, I look like up to him. him. <laughs> yeah, I, I try. I wish I could <laughs> score the goals that he, the, that he could. But um, he was always my hero, and, and we didn't often get the chance to train with them. Um, but sometimes, as you said, we were in the gym with them, or we, we were in the canteen with them, and you kind of it's amazing to just look mm -hmm. at your hero and, and see them up close and personal, and have a chat if you wanted to, and um, just to be up close and personal with, with those top top players we're talking John Terry Didier Drogba um, Arjun Robben Ida yeah, Johnson at the time he was there um, Damien Duff Damien Duff um, Scott Peter Parker Czech. another hero of mine yeah, yeah. Peter Cech um, so, so to be there as a young footballer I mean we've done at this stage you've done nothing in the game it's, it's nice that you're at Chelsea mm -hmm. but relatively you've, you've done yeah, nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. so to be alongside your heroes and, and see how they look after themselves and the extra work that they put in is was was definitely a great grounding for me so exactly everything you saw basically put you in the right state to go the direction you went even if you didn't play for chelsea so after chelsea you went to scotland yeah so at uh, at the age of 18 so i did my two-year scholarship unfortunately the the truth of the matter is i wasn't good enough i wasn't going to progress into the first team and and um, i'll always i'll never ever change the way i was brought up because chelsea uh, as an academy they looked after us so so well um, I had Brendan Rodgers as my youth team yeah, coach yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also had Steve Clark who's now the Scotland manager yeah, yeah, as I just my, saw that yeah, yeah as, as my youth team manager for a short time as well um, and, and the grounding and the foundations that, that Chelsea put into my life mm -hmm. not just on the pitch but off the pitch yeah, they, they yeah, taught me how to be a man yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was absolutely fantastic but it came to 18 and, yeah. and ultimately I wasn't going to make the grade into the first team mm -hmm. 
and a bit of a story but Brendan Rodgers was our, was our youth team manager um, and Brendan of course had great links with Celtic he mm-hmm. sent me to Celtic yeah, yeah. had a week's yeah. training with Celtic um, and um, I think whilst I was up there I got speaking to uh, someone who I knew up there and he arranged that I was going to go to Rangers as yeah, well yeah, so I went to both. major rivals bro. exactly <laughs> so a couple of weeks later I went up to Rangers yeah, and yeah, at yeah. the end of the week um, Glasgow Rangers offered me a contract then and there on the table. Then you became a professional footballer. And I became a professional footballer. So not only was it going from one massive club to another club, it was a big move for me because it's the first time really I was away from home. I was 18, I was living in an apartment. I'd I'd never cooked, I'd never cleaned. At least you were used to the cold weather because apparently Scotland is worse. Scotland's cold. (laughs) Scotland's cold. (laughs) Uh, But Rangers, I mean, and Celtic, but Rangers is an incredible football club. So can I quickly go back? I remember um, one of your friends, a journalist I respect, Joe, Joe Cran, he said um, he's not really shocked that the type of player that you are because there's so many of Dean Furman's in England. We're not used to your type of player because all our players, is, they're very skillful. The truth is you're not the most skillful, but you're hardworking, tenacious. So could that be a reason why you probably didn't really make it at Chelsea because there's so many types of you out there in England? Yeah, that, that is a fair comment. No offence, of course. Uh, no, yeah. none taken. And I've, I've learned to accept my role and I've learned to... I, I'm Which comfortable. I appreciate so much. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm comfortable with what I bring to the table. I know you're not going to... I mean, rarely you're going to see a double step over and put one in the top corner. It's just not really my thing. <laughs> Although I, one goal for Super Sport, that was a long range volume. Yeah, there, there, there are a few in there. They're, they're in there and they come out every now and again. But but not so often. But I, yeah, I've, yeah. I, as I've grown old, I've accepted my role within mm-hmm. a team. Yeah. Um, and I think the players around me appreciate what I do. Definitely, and maybe yes. it's not the most eye-catching role. Uh, maybe it's not the role that gets the headlines. But... Mm-hmm. Trust me, I'd much rather Percy Tau gets all the headlines yeah, and we and win the game. He's really well, Percy. He's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'd much rather Tembi Lorch gets all the headlines yeah, and yeah, Temba yeah. Zwani and, and Lebo Matiba. Um, those kind of guys, they get the headlines. And, and as long as we're doing our job uh-huh. or I'm doing my job, then I'm more than happy. Now, talking about doing the job for South African players, your first call-up was in 2010. Nothing really happened. You didn't come on. But the, the first real call-up, our call, 2012, Brazil, Gordon Ingerson calls you up. And you play your first game against the likes of Neymar, Hulk. How did it feel, bro? Yeah, it was, it was an interesting one. I, got, I, got a, I was actually on the golf course. I got a call from a funny number. <laughs> plus uh, two like, seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, no one had ever called me from plus two seven. Yeah. Um, so I took the call um, and it was Gordon on the phone. And, and he said, listen, we're going to Brazil next week. Um, we'd like you to join us and honestly I thought it was a joke I didn't know like I was, are you sure this, this, <laughs> what's this about yeah. so anyway I found out it was, it was all real and, mm-hmm. and next thing I was on the plane and, and, and I thought to myself we can either go two ways here either one I'm simply not good enough and we can say great had a nice week in Brazil um, and let's put it down to a good experience yeah. or I just give absolutely everything I train as if I've been here all my life I try and mingle with the boys mm-hmm. um, and see where it takes me and, and, and that was my attitude and uh, the night before the game Gordon pulled me and said listen you're starting, you're starting tomorrow yeah, yeah. which was a shock I thought maybe if I'm lucky I'm going to get five yeah, minutes yeah, at the yeah. end but I was now I was starting mm-hmm. and uh, I always remember looking down the the, uh, the lineups during the national anthem and looking to my right and seeing Neymar and David Luiz and yeah. Hulk oh, and man. Um, Marcelo all, like, all of them like, all of wow, them wow is this a game of FIFA or Julio Cesar as well was in goal yeah, at that time yeah. it, was, it was incredible and, and uh, that's the amazing thing about football once once you got over the who you were playing the whistle went and it was right let's get, yeah. let's get and stuck and you guys in. did so well that the Brazilian fans gave you guys a standing ovation at the end we did that, that was very special mm-hmm. that was amazing yeah. um, so it's, it's definitely one of my, my greatest memories in, in my whole career mm-hmm. uh, and then fast forward a few months your first AFCON you get called up again and I remember I was at the first game against, I think it was Angola, if I'm not mistaken, it was against Angola Soccer City. And Cape I'm Verde. chilling, Cape, Cape Verde, Verde yeah, I was, yeah, I was chilling at the top and I was looking down, you were warming up and I'm like, is he going to come on, is he going to come on? Because I actually came to go watch you, you didn't come on, but then the next game against Morocco, I think for me that was the beginning of the man of the match performances that you've put into Africa. I think you should be number one in terms of ranking of the amount of man of the match performances you put in. How did it feel to finally play your AFCON at relatively your home, your home ground, your home stadium? That was, that was incredible because for me, I watched the World Cup and it looked absolutely insane. Um, but as you said, I got called. To, I had that 2010 call up. Against Australia or something. Against Australia, it was in England and nothing really happened. And then we never heard again. So I thought, it's unfortunately, yeah. my, my time's done. Um, then I watched the World Cup and thought, this looks incredible. So then to go from there to kind of now I'm in the AFCON squad, 
okay, I missed the first game, but then Gordon changed the team for the second game. I think it was Angola, our first yeah. game. We went to Durban, we went to Mosma uh -huh. And just the... You the, had the orange boots, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> just, just the atmosphere was just out of this world. It mm -hmm. was absolutely insane. Um, we won the game. As you said, I got man of the match, and it was just like, this is absolutely incredible. This is what you want as That's where your nickname came out as well. The commentators, exactly. the foreign ones, were like, why are they booing their own yeah. player? And then you had to always explain, no, it's actually a nickname. How, how was that, though? <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. And I think we've got Mark Fish here. Who yeah. I think they did it with yeah, him and Fish, Matthew yeah. Booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was, it was absolutely amazing We just just to have that kind of reception because I was, re I was relatively kind of from the outside. Mm -hmm. People didn't know me. I didn't play in the local league. Mm -hmm. I didn't really grow up here. Mm -hmm. um, so to be accepted the way I did, and I know the fans here, they're, they're very... Um, I'm not. I'm not their typical kind of player. There's no shibobos from me, as we said before. Yeah. So for the fans to accept me and to appreciate the work I was doing on the pitch was was absolutely yeah, incredible, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was fantastic for myself and and my family who loved every minute as well. And seven years later, you're still in the national team. How 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 are you so consistent? You hardly get injured, and even if you do, it's for like a few weeks, and it's like far and few in between. How are you so consistent? How? I think that's that's a key part to my game. I mean, you probably. It's rare that I'll be in a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, but it's also rare that I'll be a 5 or 4 out of 10. And, and that's been one of the key things to my game. I'm mm -hmm. generally at a 6 or a 7. I'm, I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know my role. I stick to my role and I try to do it to the best of my ability. Um, with injuries, you've got to be lucky. I look after myself. Uh, not, not necessarily. Um, I'm not going out partying and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm very settled with my wife and, mm -hmm. and we, we just chill out. It's not that I live... <laughs> like the perfect perfect life yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. do enjoy ourselves when mm -hmm. when the right time's there but yeah. i look after myself yeah, and i work yeah, very yeah. hard to, to make sure i'm mm -hmm. i'm as fit as can be yeah. um that i'm that i'm strong that any areas of weakness in my body mm -hmm. are, are looked after well yeah. and and i think for me the career is all about playing games um and i want to make sure that i'm available for as many games as mm -hmm. possible and i also want to prolong my career as yeah. much as possible yeah, so yeah, i think yeah. in this day and age it's so important to, to look mm -hmm. after yourself um eat the right things make sure you're, you're going out you got to enjoy yourself, of but course, at the right the times. Balance, yeah. um, and, and exactly that, I've, I've managed to find a balance in my life that allows me to, to do as well as I can with my football and also enjoy my life on yeah, the other yeah, side. Yeah. So now you joined Super Sport 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, you, you came to a country that has all the infrastructure available, stadiums, training grounds, you name it. Why is it that, first of all, the attendances are so low, number one, number two, why is the performances of our national teams not as, as great as they should be compared to the other African countries? If you look at England, um, Saturday, we, the English get no games. You ought to wait till 10 o'clock on Saturday night to see the highlights. Match of the day. Match of the day. Um, so your only option to watch the football is to go to the games. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the attendances probably are, are always full, in, especially in the Premier League and the Championship. You're always talking big numbers big numbers <laughs> uh, whereas here every game's on TV I mean it's great Super Sport and SABC do amazing things and, and mm -hmm. without them the product wouldn't be what it is mm -hmm. but um, maybe from a fan's perspective some of the stadiums aren't so accessible and maybe it's easier to just watch it from home and it's expensive to get to the game and so it is a shame we want to see more fans we want to we want to see as many people there as possible because it is an exciting league um, we saw this season at both ends of the table uh -huh. teams could have gone down the last day yeah. teams could have won it on the last on day which, day, yeah. which is a credit to, to, the, to the players in the, and the teams in the league that we made yeah. it so exciting uh -huh. so um, I'm hoping that the attendances keep on improving I'm hoping that when people go to the games they're enjoying their, mm -hmm. the, the football and what's on display yeah. um, and we keep on providing an exciting um, goal filled league yeah. that, that the Keyword fans goal. enjoy <laughs> exactly yeah. um, with the national team it's tough um, yeah we, we seem to and then, oh, yeah. and we, then you try again and then oh, like yeah. it hurts me because I am so invested like people don't know my, my parents my sister know I am so invested and I'm like these guys are so good they have everything yeah. why what is the problem yeah we, we have to I'm the first one to hold my hands up and say over the years we've underachieved um, for a nation like this to only have one AFCON to only have qualified for two or three yeah, World I was Cups born. <laughs> yeah I mean we can't, we can't forget it. I mean, we see the legends here. Andre Aaron's yeah, yeah, here. I saw him too, uh, Mark yeah. Fisher's here. Sean Bartlett's been involved with us. Um, to see those those guys, uh, we're, we're trying to emulate that. We want that kind of success ourselves. Um, we, we, I, I keep on saying that a nation with such passion for, for the game um, 
we cannot keep failing to qualify for the major tournaments. That's the World Cup and that's the AFCON. We have to make sure that is our base. We have to make sure we're at them. And the more we're there, the more experience we're going to gain. So we, we can't have one AFCON in 2015, the next one, and we miss one, and then we go Come to again, one and we miss the yeah. World Cup. It has to now be, that's our, that's our base. We have to be qualifying. The more we qualify, the more opportunities we're going to get to, to continue to progress. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm excited by this team. I mean, it's, it's before the tournament. We've been together for, for two years now. Kind of the bulk of the team's been together. A few additions um, here and there. A few additions here and there. Um, but the boys are in, in good form. They're in good shape. We, we, I mean, the coach is absolutely fantastic. I think you only have to look at the um, the Libya game, how he came up yeah, with a system definitely. to nullify their threat. Uh-huh. And I think there were a few eyebrows raised. But when you, when we actually saw it in, uh, in action... Um, it works. to see how it worked yeah. perfectly <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we've got an absolutely fantastic coach who will mm-hmm. be ready for, for any team and, and it's up to us as players to go out there yeah. and express Please ourselves guys, like I'm begging <laughs> yeah. no we, we give it absolutely everything yeah. we, we're confident we, we've got to take a lot of confidence and a lot of heart from beating Nigeria away uh-huh. from playing very well at them uh, against them at FMB mm-hmm. um, the Libya game as well that, that really showed under, under pressure and under scrutiny and under difficult circumstances you we can, we can rise to the, the challenge yeah. So there's, there's, there's a good feeling about this team. Everyone's here, everyone's after the same thing. We're, yeah. we're very united. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. there's, there's kind of no egos. Everyone's kind of uh-huh. gelling well it's together. Yeah. <laughs> so it, there's a really good mix at the moment and um, we're going to give absolutely everything. It's tough. Yeah, no, course, no doubt yeah, yeah. We, we've got some tough teams in our group mm-hmm. um, and we can't underestimate any of them. So, yeah, but, yeah. but we have to get out of the group. We, yeah. we, we really want to get out yeah. the group and, and we're going to give absolutely everything to do that. And from then on, it's a knockout competition. So you heard it here first, guys. Let's see what we yeah. can do. So uh-huh. we're, we're working extremely hard in yeah, the build up yeah. and, and hopefully come that Ivory Coast game, we'll be, we'll be ready to give absolutely everything. Cool. And to wrap up, there's so much to say, but you know, time. So what are your plans? I see you signing um, a one year deal with Super Sports. What are your plans from off the AFCON until maybe the next four or five years? Yeah, so, so the plan in, in general, um, I've, I've always had a goal of trying to get to 35. I remember someone telling me that um, this was more in England, but there's something like it's below 5% of players who start in the academy at 17 that get to 35. Mm-hmm. So that's my, my goal for my career, and anything above 35 is a bonus. Hopefully yeah. my, my legs will still be able to move <laughs> at, that, at that stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've signed another year at Supersport. Um, fantastic club. We've had some great success over the last few mm-hmm. years. Um, and I'm hoping that, that we can we can get some more this year. Um, put our, put our hands on some more silverware. Yeah, yeah. Um, and going forward after the career, I'm trying to get myself different options. Um, by by the time I'm finished my career, I will have done all my coaching badges. Oh, um, I've got a degree in sports science. I've congrats. done marketing courses. I've done business management courses. So what people don't realise is that it's a short career. Mm-hmm. And once you're finished at 35 you've what got to go into then? another career yeah. so you can't just you can't just stop you, we've got to earn money it's, it's not like we're making money to last us a lifetime mm-hmm. we're making money to support our families True, yeah. uh, and, and we have to go into another <clears throat> career so I'm trying to give myself the best opportunity yeah. that when I finish maybe I'll take two weeks off but I don't like time off yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll get into something yeah, new I saw you were now in Manchester and you just kept working doing crazy yeah. laps around that CrossFit training yeah. thing whatever that's, that's <laughs> my thing I, I like to work I like yeah. to stay fit um, I wanted to come here in yeah. as, as good a shape as possible so that it didn't take me three or four days to catch up. Um, I wanted to come here feeling good mm-hmm. um, and ready for, for hopefully a big tournament. So right. I, I thought cool. I'm not going to chill out too much. I'm going <laughs> to keep working. And yeah. that, that's kind of been my attitude towards my career. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck to the national team. We hope that they make us proud in Egypt. Uh, good luck to Dean as well for the upcoming season. All the best with your, all your projects, all your plans. Um, congrats again on getting married last year. I think it was. Thank you. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys for all your support. It really means a lot to me. And catch you guys in the next episode. Remember, God bless. And I'm signing out. Did you ever doubt that you'd make it as a professional footballer? I always I'm always proving myself and, and other people that's that's the way I'm 30 now and I'm still trying to prove to myself that I can continue to play at a top level and so we're always we're always questioning ourselves and I think that's that's what makes me better who was your favorite footballer of all time Frank Lampard easy question um, always been my hero loved him uh, the goals he scored and uh, looking like a very good manager as well yeah